Welcome to Art with Addie. I'm Addie, and this is where you learn how to paint. Welcome back, everybody. Happy Tuesday and happy continuation of Halloween. I have a bunch of random. So I decided that I want to just randomly wear parts of costumes for this video. <laughs> this is a mistake. I'll take it back. I'm going to be painting a vase that's going to have stuff on it. Which is brew. I had a masquerade party last year, okay? It was fun. It was for my birthday. Which is in like... Whatever, it's on the 26th, you do the math. <laughs> Before we get started, just a quick reminder to please like this video, hit the subscribe button so you can get notifications when I post a new video every Tuesday, and drop me a comment, let me know what you wanna see for next week. All right, for this project, you're going to need a glass bottle or vase. For acrylic paints, we will need black, white, red, yellow, and blue at minimum. You will also be using um, green if you have a bottle of that. For paint brushes, um, acrylic specific or multi-purpose will work. We'll be working with medium size down to fine tip brushes today. A cup of water, paper towels, a palette for mixing paint. I just use wax paper and tape it to the back of a um, cutting board. And also paint mixing sticks. Here's a look at the bottle that I found. There's a bunch of sticker goo all over it, so I'm just going to use some nail polish remover with a cotton pad, and it's got some texture on there, so it helps get off all of the dirt and goop. After you have cleaned off all of the glass, I'm just showing here that there's two kind of like seams on the bottle, so I'm gonna use that as a guideline. I'm just going to be using the front half of the bottle. And the first color that we're gonna start working with here is black. And the first brush that we're going to be working with is a flat but rounded brush. Glass is one of the more difficult surfaces to work with, so the softer the brushes that you have, the better. Harder brushes tend to kind of pick up the paint off of the surface and leave streaks. So we're gonna start with a straight across line to put in the top line of the cauldron here. And then after we have that in, we're just going to draw in the rest of the outline of this cauldron, just a big rounded C here. And then we're just gonna fill in the rest of this body with black. Keep in mind that we will be coming back and putting in multiple layers of most of everything that we're working on today just because the glass is a little bit more difficult to work with. So you don't need to worry about the streaks just yet. Next, I'm gonna go in with my very fine tip brush to put in a couple of little legs at the bottom of the cauldron. So just carefully making a diagonal line out of each side of this and then putting like a little rounded foot on here. After we have let that first layer dry for a couple of minutes, we're just gonna go back in with the same flat rounded brush and put in another layer of black. So I'm noticing that going back to using the same flat rounded brush is just a little bit too rough on the glass here. So I'm choosing this smaller, fluffier, rounder, softer brush. 
and that is going to allow us to put on more coats without taking off the first layer of paint. As you can see here, I'm also using some scissors to trim back any of the stray hairs that will help with any of the stray streaks that you might see in your painting. And again, using that fine tip brush just to put in another layer for the feet. Next, I'm going to put in a cobweb on each lower corner following the seams on the side. So I'm going to start all the way down in the bottom right hand corner of where that seam meets. And if you're unfamiliar with painting cobwebs, you're basically just going to draw out some diagonal lines coming from the same point. And depending on how large your bottle is, is dependent on how large you want these cobwebs to be. But again, since we are working with glass, we want to be very gentle and patient with ourselves right now. And the next part of drawing in these cobwebs is basically making connections that are gonna be kind of like a wide U. And if you have a little bit of a shaky hand like me, you can use your pinky to help stabilize your hand. Also looking back at my finished painting here, I probably would have made these cobwebs about twice the size that they are because it is kind of difficult to see these cobwebs unless you actually rotate the bottle. And we're gonna do the exact same thing on the other side of where this seam meets the bottom of the bottle. Keep in mind that these colors that I'm choosing to use is just a personal preference. If you want some sort of colored cobwebs, you can totally do that as well. All right, the next color that we're going to use is a plain white. And I'm gonna go back in with that medium size round but soft brush. And we're gonna put in the bubbles that are gonna go on top of the cauldron here. And we wanna use a sort of dabbing technique to make it look fluffy. So just tilting your brush slightly to an angle here just use this kind of dabbing technique um, and spreading the paint around as evenly as you can. Also being pretty careful as to not go too far into the black. If you want to make some portions that are kind of spilling over the edge, you can feel free to do that as well. But I am making the top portion of these bubbles kind of come up into a triangular shape. 
We're going to go back in and do another layer of the bubbles on the top of the cauldron a bit later, but while that dries, I'm going to go in with my finest tip brush and just put some highlights in around the cauldron. We'll want to be sure to wipe and clean our brush periodically while doing this because we can actually dip into that black paint underneath a little bit and make the white look more gray. So just be sure to clean off your brush every once in a while if you notice that happening. So I'm basically just choosing where I want to put in these highlights. I'm putting in a straight line going from the bottom of the lip of the cauldron, basically all the way over. And then I'm also putting these sort of curved C shapes around the curved edges as well. If you're noticing that your cauldron is not completely black or you can still see some of the glass peeking through, be sure to put in another layer of black and let that dry before you put in these highlights. Again here I'm just putting in a sort of long curved white line here just to go along the right hand edge but not going all the way to the edge with this white. And lastly for the highlight portion of this painting we're just going to draw a very small white line going along the upper edge of each foot. And now that the bubbles have had a little bit time to dry while we're putting in those highlights, I'm just going to put in another layer of those bubbles with white. The next color that I'm going to be working with here is a sort of lime green. So if you don't have green, then you can mix yellow and blue and using quite a bit more yellow than blue. And here I'm just wanting to make this sort of triangular shape that is coming off of the bubbles to make a sort of curvy smoky shape here with the green. And I'm again using that same brush that we were using to make the bubbles and just using the same sort of dabbing technique to make it look just a little frothy. I'm also dabbing in just a little bit of this green along the upper edge of the white bubbles. And we will come back in just a little bit later to put in another layer of that green. Next I am going to be mixing an orange. If you don't have orange we're just going to use some red and yellow and we're going to be using this to make some flames at the bottom of the cauldron. The exact shade of orange here doesn't quite matter. But we are going to be using orange and then putting some yellow inside of those at the center of each flame. So for the flames, I'm going in with that medium sized brush that we were using earlier with the bubbles. And I'm just drawing a straight across line right underneath the cauldron, kind of a, a rounded, elongated line here. And then I am just painting in a few sort of teardrop shapes with this orange right over the bottom of the cauldron. We're going to let that dry for a few minutes before we put the yellow in over that orange. 
And I'm gonna go back in with the very fine tip brush here and using pure black. And we're gonna get started on the lettering. It's sort of up to you on how you want this handwriting to look. If you want it to be in cursive, you can do that. I'm choosing just kind of a, my natural um, rounded cursive handwriting. And I'm just carefully putting in each line here. We will have to go over this twice because we are doing it on glass. And I am again going in very carefully and using my pinky on the portion of the bottle that doesn't have paint on it just to keep my hand stable. Again, if you want to use a different color other than black, please feel free to do that. And with using these very small fine tip brushes here, the paint can dry over time while you're using it, so it can clump up at the end of the brush. So just be sure to go in and wipe off your brush or clean your brush as you're going along here. And for the word brew, I'm going just below the word witches and I am indenting brew just a little bit because it is a shorter word. And the word brew will be overlapping that green smoke just a little bit. All right, while that first layer of our lettering is drying, I'm gonna go back in with that same brush. And I'm just gonna put in another layer of the orange on the flames. After letting that dry for a little bit, we're gonna go back in and put in a second layer over the lettering. And if you have more experience painting letters, then you can also go in with a secondary color to do highlights, like with the green or purple or white. All right, after we get that second layer of the lettering done, I'm gonna go in using the fine tip brush, and I'm just gonna put in a little bit of yellow in the center of each of those teardrop shapes on the flames. If you find that just using a basic stroke on top of the orange here with the yellow is kind of peeling up the orange paint, you can also use this sort of dabbing technique instead. I'm going to go in and put a couple of bats around the words witch's brew and I'm just going to use my fine tip brush and if you have watched my last two videos I kind of go into how to make bats so we're basically just going to make a wide shaped pointed M
and then we're gonna go into where those curves under the wings go and then put in an extra point. And here's the point where if you want to put in any extra things, I'm choosing just to put in two bats because I want to keep it simple for this video. If you want to put in a ton of bats, if you want to put in extra cobwebs or a spider or something like that, please feel free to do that. We are going to need to put in another layer of paint on each of the bats. So if you just go in and make each bat first, and then by the time you're done with your last bat, that should be dry enough to go ahead and put in the second layer on all of them. And the last thing that I'm going to do is keep using that same brush, the fine tip brush, and just putting in another layer in the center of that green smoke. Again, if you want to put in any extra items into here, now is the time to do that. If you want to take your painting to the next level, you can always put in highlights in your lettering or any of the objects on this painting. If you want to use this for function, I highly suggest getting a glaze spray or an adhesive spray just to seal this. So in case when you get it wet, when you fill it with water or anything like that, then the paint won't come off. If you want to just fill this with water and put some flowers or something in there, that's an option for me. I chose to just put some food coloring and water in there and also some red sprinkles so it kind of looks like a sort of potion here. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this episode. Next week is going to be the last Halloween themed video so you want to stay tuned for that. It's my birthday next week. I don't know what this is supposed to be.